Jesus used any titles for himself, it certainly was the Son of Man, because that is the most strongly historically testifiable according to the criteria of historical investigation. It's found in all four Gospels, and we don't see any reason for people to have invented it. There's no reason why the early church would have invented the term Son of Man for Jesus, because they never used it themselves. So they wouldn't have invented it later, and no one was expecting Jesus to be the Son of Man, so he wasn't fulfilling a prophecy by calling himself the Son of Man. He just called himself the Son of Man. It's the strongest kind of historical testimony there is. It's called the criterion of dissimilarity, and it fulfills the fact that Jesus called himself the Son of Man. It's very strong. And similarly, sitting at the right hand of the power is quoted so frequently in the New Testament, over 20 times, as I said. It's the most commonly quoted section of the Old Testament found in the New Testament that you can't just pull it out. You can't say it's not historical, because if you did, that crushes the foundation of the New Testament, of all of the history that we find there. And you wouldn't be able to know anything if you took that out. So Jesus claimed to be the Son of Man, and Jesus claimed to be sitting at the right hand of the power, is thoroughly ingrained in the earliest Christian sources. You can't pull it out. And they both point to him being divine. It's the strongest kind of evidence there is. When it comes to Jesus' death on the cross, we know through historical investigation that if we can be certain of anything about Jesus' life, it's that he died on the cross. Historians who study his life from a skeptical viewpoint, ones who are agnostics or atheists, not Christians at all, they will say that we can be certain about Jesus' death on the cross under Pontius Pilate. And I'm quoting people like Marcus Borg, Paula Fredrickson, Bart Ehrman, John Dominic um, Cross, and all of these guys. They all agree that Jesus must have died on the cross. So we can go into that, and it was especially relevant for me as a Muslim because in the Quran, uh, it says that Jesus did not die on the cross. And so for me, it was kind of a litmus test. What does history say about Jesus' death on the cross? And when I found out that it was categorically, uniformly pointing to the fact that Jesus died on the cross, there was no other way around it, then I as a Muslim had to force myself to say that Christianity had the weight of evidence behind it, at least on this issue. And that in Islam, I had to be accepting the Islamic doctrine by blind faith alone. Christians didn't have to do that. And that he rose from the dead is an extremely powerful argument as well. In fact, uh, Michael Martin, who is an atheist, has commented on today's argument for the resurrection, specifically the minimal facts formulation, that it is the most strong argument for the resurrection ever provided in all of history. You have atheists saying that the argument is strong. And what is the argument? The argument for the resurrection is that the facts surrounding the Easter events are best explained by the resurrection hypothesis. This one we just talked about, that Jesus died on the cross, combined with some other facts that we see, that the disciples, for example, were thoroughly changed because of what they saw, and that enemies of Christ, like Paul and perhaps his brother James, who were not following him, before the resurrection appearances, and all of a sudden are now willing to live their lives and die for the sake of Jesus' resurrection. You combine these factors, and maybe some other factors if you'd like, like the tomb being empty the third day. These factors that historians, a majority of historians agree to, are best explained by one hypothesis and one hypothesis alone, that Jesus actually rose from the dead.